Welcome to Native Exiles, Alderwood Community Church's podcast, where we talk about following Jesus and the tension of being in the world, but not of it. We've been in a little series on parenting for a few weeks here, and we're going to dive into one aspect of parenting, the decision of where to send your kids to school. And we've got some great interviews lined up for the next three weeks, talking to people from the Christian school perspective, uh, public school and homeschool. And we're going to start today uh, talking about private Christian school. My guest is George. Jordan Gage, who's the superintendent at King's Schools in Shoreline, Washington. And I mean, we had a great conversation about uh, about Christian school. Very real, very honest, and uh, and I really appreciate it. I think you will as well. Here we go. Jordan, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Hey, so uh, for people that aren't familiar with you, who are you? What do you do? How did we end up here? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Jordan Gage. I uh, attend Alder Community Church. And I've uh, been here for a long time. I've uh, been at Edmonds for a while. Uh, but what I do, I'm a head of school at, at King Schools, a, a K-12, preschool through 12, actually, um, private school here uh, in Edmonds, Shoreline area. And uh, passionate about what I do and excited to, to explore this with you a little further. And yeah, love this area, love this region, love what we're doing here at Christian Education. Awesome. Well, yeah, so we're in a series where we're trying to think through schooling options for kids. And it's one of the big questions that every parent has to figure out. What am I going to do when my kid finally hits that age? This series really is just a thinly veiled, uh, you know, thing for me because my kids are heading into school next year and I'm trying to figure it out. So uh, I thought we'd record some podcasts to help me figure my life out. And uh, and so I'm really excited to have you here from the Christian school perspective. You are given a huge chunk of your life right now to helping King's succeed in yeah. the Christian schooling environment. Uh, for you, why is this what you're doing with your life? What, why do you care about this? Why are you passionate about Christian schooling? Yeah, great question. Never thought much about it growing up. Who does, right? About uh, Christian school in that context, right? Just kind of doing school, doing sports, do my life. You know, you finish college and, and you kind of like have this career path. Um, and, and part of me was always passionate about um, impact. I knew that, right? I was raised in a Christian home, knew the impact of coaches and teachers and people in, in his life. And it felt like maybe that's what God was calling me to do in that lane. Um, and then even broader, but I didn't experience Christian education. Uh, again, homeschooled, public school, um, all of that was my experience. Uh, but out of college, I got an opportunity to work in a private Christian school and saw the incredible impact uh, that that opportunity had in the explicit nature at which we could teach and expose kids to the gospel. Yeah. Um, and so I really feel like that's where uh, my love for that came and, and what God continued to do in my life in that. And then Obviously, as we explore um, what that looks like beyond when I first started Christian education into leadership and the idea of like, you know, there's an opportunity to really impact generations of students beyond yeah. um, uh, just maybe a single classroom. And so that's kind of what I got into um, Christian education as far as like leadership goes and, and the impact that it has on kids' lives and families' lives. Hmm. Um, and just time and time again, uh, you just see the huge impact. Again, obviously, we know the gospel. Uh, Jesus changes everything. I mean, yeah. and so we can expose kids to that, uh, give a renewed heart or Christ can give the renewed heart, uh, but the opportunity for that. And then beyond that, prepare them to walk in the world, the biblical worldview and, and have that impact um, on their yeah. peers, on their career. And so you just see that ripple effect through Christian education. I feel like that's that's what God called me to. Um, yeah. So I just kind of dove down that's that great. lane. Yeah. That's great. All right. Well, you're off to a good start, but I, I want to ask you to give me yeah. the pitch here. Okay. So I, I am a... <laughs> I'm a parent. I've got yeah. two kids. You yeah. know, next year, one of my kids is going to be in kindergarten. The year after that, they'll both be uh, in school. Like, man, it's a lot of money to send a kid to private Christian school and a sacrifice for sure. Like, if, yeah. if you're talking to a parent like me, what is the pit? Like, why should I invest what it's going to take to get my kids in Christian school? Yeah. Great question. And a common question. Uh, same with again, my wife and I, like, same kind of conversations. Like, what do we do? Um, the average student, if you will, spends roughly in their time from kindergarten through 12th grade, a minimum 13,000 hours wow. in school, right? Under the tutelage of a teacher and then even beyond that with coaches, right? So they're getting 13,000 hours of influence. Hmm. And the question becomes, where do you want the influence to come from? Yeah. And so my argument would be from people that love Jesus, from people that are going to point from a biblical worldview. They're going to care deeply about your kids, not just in their spiritual walk, um, but even beyond that, right? Their academics, like as a Christian, like just truly believe in excellence and doing things as if we're doing for the Lord, right? So Mm -hmm. even when it comes to education, like that is what you're going to get in a Christian context, in a Christian education context. So 
that'd be my like first pitch. It's pretty like, good. Yeah. You're going to get it's a compelling. lot of influence and your kids are going to get discipled by somebody and something, hmm. right? Whether it's in a public school, whether it's by the, the phone, right? Like yeah. something. Yeah. And so why not spend those 16,000 hours in the presence of people that love, care for you could deeply, more importantly, they love and care for Jesus and what he's done in their life. And so that's the kind of like initial big, like, wow, what do we do as parents, Yeah, you know, in that context? <clears throat> You're using that word discipleship. Is yeah. that what you see the mission of Kings being? Is it to disciple kids? Is that kind of the center? Uh, how, or if not, how would yeah. you define, like, what is the purpose of, of your school? Yeah. Building resilient disciples of Christ. Yeah. Like that's what I would articulate our mission being. Um, and that comes in uh, when you kind of break that down a little bit. Uh, for me, right, it's that they have a rooted heart with the uh, with the gospel, right? That the gospel has mm -hmm. actually transformed their heart. Like that's the first place that we want to keep exposing kids to the gospel. And then beyond that, like equip their minds with a biblical worldview. Um, and of course, academic excellence so they're prepared. Um, yeah, prepared lives, right? Yeah. To actually have impact uh, that they would be prepared to say yes to the call, will, purpose that God has in our life, right? So all that is kind of wrapped up in what I would say, what we're after is building resilient disciples of Christ. Yeah. Um, is, yeah, the mission Do that we're doing. Uh, we talked a little bit before we started yeah. recording. I'm a King's grad myself. Yes, I graduated yes. in 2009 from, uh, from your school. And and so I've seen things from the inside. I, I also, I was a youth pastor for a long time and had a yeah. lot of uh, Christian school students, uh, Kings in particular. Um, do you think there's any danger with, that model that you're talking about. So you're going to build resilient disciples of Christ. And I love that vision. Do you see any sense of parents trying to outsource that to you of like, I'm going to drop my kids off at King's. You guys are going to make them resilient disciples. Like I'm going to get yeah. to just not have to worry about that anymore. And we can go to church once a month and everything we find. Like, yeah. uh, totally. I saw that yeah. some, I mean, mm -hmm. how do you engage with families in that so that they understand that's not really that's not the model or, or yeah. am I wrong? Is that the model? You are going to just you know, take their kids and do it for them. <laughs> no, no. That's a, a great question. Um, and what that looks like. So yes, there's danger in that. Um, but what I would say and where we, we stand at, even at Kings or any, any Christian school I've worked in, um, a firm belief that the parent is the primary educator yeah. and the parent is responsible. They've been entrusted. God has put that responsibility on the parent. We're here to partner with that parent. So, uh, that, and then of course the church, right? Don't want to overlook that. That's a huge part of what we do. Really it's like that three, three strand cord, right? Like not easily broken. I think of it in that context mm -hmm. of like, man, if you get all three of those in alignment, um, some really great opportunity to build a resilient example of Christ. So it's not going to be the school by itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, we want to do the best we can in that. We're always going to advocate for the local church and we're always going to advocate for the parent be the primary. Uh, educator. They're your first and your best, yeah. right? They're your first and the best educator. And we can't shirk that to the school. Okay. I like that a lot. I'm yeah. going to keep giving you just all my best uh, reasons not to go to school. Okay, yeah. You ready? No, this is so, good. Uh, I, these are all real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, another thing I've thought through, I've heard other parents articulate, especially parents who have their kids in the public school and are really, uh, that's not just something like we can't afford Christian school, yeah. but like we really believe in putting our kids in public schools. One of the big heart things behind yeah. that I've heard is, we want our kids to be salt and light. Like we want our kids to be in the community yeah. around people who don't know Jesus. You know, it's a huge part of discipleship is, is uh, being a witness, sharing the gospel and, you know, putting your kids in, in private Christian school could almost feel like cutting that opportunity off, you know, raising your mm -hmm. kid in a Christian bubble, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they get so comfortable around Christians. They don't even know how to act around non-Christians. You kind of almost have this fear that your kids are going to develop this sense that the world yeah. outside the Christian bubble is dangerous, is yeah. the enemy, you know, is. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, what would you say to a parent who's, who's giving you that? Yeah. All valid points, honestly, right? When you think about, okay, what that means to put your kids in the mission field. Um, and then I guess the way I would process that, and again, totally understand that perspective of like, oh, we can't shelter. We've got to make sure, <laughs> right? We're in the world, we're not of it, you know, and try to manage that that balance of even, you think about it through like grace and truth, right? There's always this like beautiful tension in lots of these things. And so yeah. how do we do that with our kids and, and not necessarily throw them to the wolves, right? If you will. <laughs> and so that's a part of, I think that conversation. And I would argue that more now than ever, like that's a bigger risk <laughs> uh, that you're going to put them in a context where there may be very few believers, maybe not. I, I don't know. There's some phenomenal Christian educators in the public school, phenomenal Christian families yeah. in the public school. So that's not a, certainly a blanket statement by any measure of what that looks like. Um, but I would say, and then you've been in the Christian school context, like 
there's not a lot, it's not as, as rosy as it maybe it seems from the outside, right? You really are in, in an environment where there's people that have different beliefs. We are a missional school, mm-hmm. right? So people define Christian schools in a couple contexts, right? So it's either you're going to be like called a uh, like covenant or discipleship school or missional school. Um, I define Kings as actually a missional school that disciples all students. So what, help um, us understand the difference there. Yeah. So like a covenant school or a discipleship school is where a parent would have to sign like a statement of faith in the okay. sense of like, we believe we're a Christian yeah. or even have a pastor sign okay. for them, right? We're a missional school. We don't require a Christian background or the student to profess as a believing. Um, so the yeah. students don't have to profess faith. <clears throat> the parents don't have to profess Correct. faith. Yeah. Your faculty does. Is that yes. right? One hundred percent. Double down on that. Vitally important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we do a lot to make sure and ensure that, like, we're going to put anybody that is walking with your kids, especially in the classroom context, uh, but coaches, anything else that you can imagine having influence on your kids to be believers. Uh, not only just, hey, I have faith, like, but no, actively believe in our Lord Jesus Christ yeah. like with our orthodox, orthodox historical biblical values. Um, yeah. That is vitally important for what we do to create that kind of culture. You can only be a strong missional school if you have that in place. Otherwise, you'll experience a mission drift yeah. uh, from that context. And so yeah. part of what you're saying, and I experienced myself, is don't think that you're not going to have the opportunity to be salt and light at a school like King's. You're going to be surrounded right, by all kinds it. of people who don't yeah. know Jesus. I, yeah. I think one of the I, I found one yeah. of the challenges um, – and I never went to, I went to public school through sixth grade, but as a teenager, I didn't experience public school. But my sense f- from my friends who were in public school and people in the youth group that I was with that were in public school was there were really clear uh, boundaries at public school between who were believers and people who were following Jesus and who were not. Like you had very few people in the public mm-hmm. school experience who yeah. were acting like they were Christians, but didn't really care. Like there's just no reason to do that in the public school. Where my experience at King's was actually, there was this huge chunk of students where like, you're kind of doing, you're doing the thing. Like you're going through the motions. This is a Christian school. You know what you're supposed to believe. You know what you're supposed to say. You have to go to chapel, you know? uh, Yeah, you know how to answer the the test in Bible class Mm -hmm. and all of that. But from a heart perspective, uh, a lot of kids who just hadn't really decided that they were serious yeah. about following Jesus. And I found that to be a unique challenge of the Christian school uh, experience. Yeah. And um, and I just wonder, like, how would you counsel a parent who yeah. has their kids at King's, wants their kids to love Jesus and, you know, become a resilient disciple? Yeah. Um, how would you counsel them to navigate that reality? That there's going to be, yeah. I mean, some lukewarm uh people in in this environment uh what would you say yeah. to a parent kind of bringing that up to you yeah i mean that's a great question i think even as a christian in a christian family raising my kids right you always want that to be authentic faith for them right it, it can't it can't just translate right like mm-hmm. my kids aren't christian become my because i'm a christian right and so that kind of mentality um the authenticity of it and understanding that again just because a, a a kid or a student comes from a christian home or like we do not assume anything right but we want to make sure we lay the gospel explicit to these kids and, yeah. and help them understand what that means to to take that for their own um and to actually walk that out authentically right and and yeah going through the motions right there's some element and i don't know about you but in my own life you find these moments where you're like man i feel like i was just going through the motions absolutely you know and then find the value and the obedience of that and what does that mean when you look back and try to wrestle through what that looks like and the moments where it becomes authentic and real and you get to see that it's a beautiful thing and then how that can translate to their peers and what it looks like beyond that. And so counseling a parent to like walk through that of like, wait, are they just going to have friends of all like fake Christians? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. You know? And of course, that's like the discernment of that too, is like friends, you know, walking through it. But your hope is that you have enough people, whether it's coaches and teachers in the community that you're building that are all pointing to Jesus in the right way and authentically walking out their faith. And then yeah. we as a school are challenging them in that and challenge them in what that means to actually to be a Christian, to, to let God be the leader of their life. Um, and so that's the piece where like parents like, hey, they're gonna have plenty of opportunity to walk this out and lead their peers. They're gonna have plenty of opportunity, even at a Christian school, to have to step out and maybe feel uncomfortable, to have to maybe lead worship if they choose mm-hmm. to grow in their faith. Um, there's lots of opportunity to grow in your faith at a Christian school and not feel like you're just a part of the, the the group that's just going. Does that probably exist? Yeah, I think so. There's some elements of that. 
but you hope over time, you hope the people that you put in place and the classrooms and the opportunities they have, that they get a chance to live this thing out and grow and really yeah. get sanctified in that process. Uh, and then also the opportunity to truly invite Jesus into the life, like that we're actually explicitly sharing the gospel. And so that's what I would say, like it, it, there was a season, I think in Christian education, and this is just opinion, this is in fact here, but um, in Christian education where there was like, let's just shelter, let's do everything we can to shelter kids this bubble. But then we saw the ramification of that when kids went off to college and yeah. you just feel like, man, they just got knocked over left and right when they hit the world, if you will. And again, that's where that where I feel like God's put in my heart is to build resilient disciples of Christ, right? That they can actually make that impact and influence the world around them when they walk out of an environment, whether it's a church environment, a Christian home, a Christian school, that they actually have that resilience to stick to their faith, to be active church goer, believe the Bible is the authoritative yeah. inerrant word of God, yeah. like all these things. And it's like, okay, how do we do that without then throwing them to the wolves too soon or putting them in an environment where they just get swept away? Because we've seen that too, yep. right? So it's like, how do we wade out in the water uh, with the right and appropriate um, measures to make sure that they are growing and that we are discipling them to have that impact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things I would also say to a parent ask that question is uh, your kid's opportunity to be salt and light doesn't have to be in the classroom. You know, right. I, like for me, it was my select baseball team. Yeah. You know, it was. Yeah. Uh, some of my friends that I had through other avenues that weren't connected to school or church. Um, and, you know, I'm, I probably would, uh, you know, a parent at our church who's talking to me about this, I probably would really encourage them. If you're going to have your kids in Christian school, make yeah. sure you're intentional about some environments that your kids are going to be in outside mm -hmm. of the Christian universe. Because yep. uh, I think that is important, but it, it's also very possible. It's easy actually to find those. It doesn't have to be yeah. uh, in your school. I, I'm curious, uh, you're talking about how you know you don't have to make a commitment to be a follower of Jesus to send your kids to Kings. How what percentage of your school would you say is not making any sort of profession of faith? Yeah, good question. Um, it's always a challenge to get the accurate number of that, right? Because people come in in the application process, and that's typically where we put in, in capture that kind of data and information. Mm -hmm. But then that'd be there five, six years, and you right. hope that they actually either meet Jesus in that process. Um, so it's, it's hard to gather a, a perfect um, measure of that. I know a lot of schools wrestle with like, hey, what's that like balance? You know, what does that look like? Uh, so for us, even um, again, just in the process of our admissions process, that we're all collectively keeping a pulse on what that looks like. Hmm. Um, and so again, how would you define, right? A, a true, authentic Christian, like walking this thing out. Maybe there's a group that's like, hey, nominal in that sense. And then a, a few other that that actually just professes making sure or that we know that they're 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 neutral right mm -hmm. now and they're, they're they love our values but they're they're neutral in this um so i would say if i just say off the top of my head you're probably talking 70 ish percent that would hey, they're christians active mm -hmm. churchgoers things like that and then there's a, a percentage that would be maybe nominal um in that and then there's a, yeah. a percentage that's that's not you know i'm a philosophically i'll just share what i think and maybe people think differently um, philosophically, people think, okay, that's if it's 50 50, great. We have our kids we can be missional to and not. Uh, I'm a firm believer in culture. Um, and I want a culture and a current that's so strong towards Jesus. I actually think your impact can be greater yeah. um, with that versus just like, hey, we have 95% of our kids we can mission to. Like, your culture is going to get impacted. Yeah. Because we also want an environment um, for Christian families and Christian uh, uh, sort of students that want to be raised and, and shepherded in that environment. Um, we also want to provide that. Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a huge on, on on culture and that opportunity for families where you would come and feel super confident that your kids are in an environment where, hey, they're not, they're not going to get exposed to certain things, but they were walking this out in a very Christ-like way and being very honoring in how we approach um, everything we do, God honoring. Yeah. For those families that mm. don't have a faith commitment, yeah. why are they sending their kids to Kings? What what are they getting out of it? Uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the reason to do that? Yeah, well, I would say, I would argue Jesus is very attractive. Hmm. And people don't always know it. They don't yeah. know what it is yet, yeah. right? There's something about um, when you're around believers, authentic believers, the way God is working their life, and you know, even the fruit of the spirit. Like, like people will see that, they experience that. Of course, the the idea of like, hey, there's a, a, a school that is going to do academics really well. We're going to do sports, like all these other things. The character piece of that. Um, a lot of people align to our character values. So we get, we've gotten um, uh, families with with that approach. Like, hey, like we're, we're ambivalent to religion. Like we think it's great. Our kids can choose whatever they want when they get right. older. Right. So that we can have those conversations uh, with families. And and sometimes it is interesting, you know, that like, awesome. Like, this is really cool that you would, you know, allow us this opportunity. 
and we, we don't shy away from it. So one of the things at Kings that's really important to me is that we're just super clear um, that we continue to define and refine our culture, overt in what we're doing, um, that we are a Christian school, all the stuff, our Christian identity uh, should be just saturated in what we do. And that is really important to me too. So people know what they're getting. Right? Yeah. So they're not coming there under false uh, perception of like, oh, this is a great academic institution, right? Like that, that's not what we're after. First and foremost, the top of the list is that we're a Christian school. Um, distinctively, decidedly, like we're a Christian school. And, and when families know that and they walk in kind of open to what God's going to do, like that's where I feel like God does some great work. Yeah. Incredible stuff in families uh, that you would never expect. Hmm. That's awesome. And so yeah, I'm always, it is a curious thing. Um, but I love it. I think there's something attractive about what God does in and through people. And if people feel that in the community, the way they love each other, the way they're part of something uh, bigger than themselves, yeah. I think we get a sense of that. That's Kings, cool. Yeah. Um, you're not only the superintendent, you're a parent of uh, four yeah. kids at Kings right now. Yes. And uh, I'm curious, what would you say to parents that the biggest challenges are to having your kids in the public school? Like from a discipleship perspective, as they think about raising their kids to – you know, love Jesus and walk with him. Like if, if you were able to direct parents' focus to a couple areas with their kids, like what, what would you say? Hey, make sure your kids are thinking through this or aware of this yeah. or aren't doing this or- In the public know. sector? No, in, in, oh, okay. in private. Okay, uh, Yeah, for a parent who has kids at Kings, um, what, what okay. like, um, yeah. you know, what what do you want, really want them paying attention to as, as their kids are moving through uh, grades at, at Kings? Yeah, I would say- that's a great question. I think my wife and I have those kind of conversations and it kind of back to your first initial point of like, let's not take for granted what our role is as parents. Mm -hmm. Like we cannot step aside from that role. Um, and it's vitally important that we are actively walking this out as parents, that we are modeling this. We're modeling all the stuff that if, if there's a disconnect from what they're learning at school to what they're seeing at home, like that's where I think things go wrong. Yeah. Uh, just my opinion. You know, my kids are young enough. I haven't really fully experienced this yet, but I think that some of it, right, is like, hey, they're hearing all these things at school maybe, right? And then all of a sudden at home, the way the parents are acting, how they're interacting with each other, the time they're spending the word, are they going to church, plugged into their faith community. If there's a disconnect on that, that's where the trust starts to break down. Um, yeah. So if you can ensure, uh, I'd say alignment, right, in understanding like that your kids are seeing you walk out your faith. And then you're asking and keeping that dialogue going with what they're learning at school. How is that applying, right? And, and making sure that there's there's no separation of like your faith, right? Like it's not yeah. just going to be yeah. in this context of your life. And that's a school thing. And then at home, we kind of do this thing. Uh, so that's the one thing I'd always have parents or encourage parents um, to reflect on. is like, how are we modeling this? How are we making sure we're actually living this out so our kids can see? Because that's who they... That's who they look up to. Yeah. Um, yes, they love their teachers and yes, they love their coaches, but they're looking at you as a parent. Um, so I would encourage that uh, friendships, uh, the mm -hmm. discernment in friendships. Like I would always talk about uh, that as my encouragement, even with my own kids. My wife and I raise these kids up. It's like, okay, who are they around? Who are they spending time with? What does that influence look like? Because uh, yeah. I'm sure we've all kind of probably experienced like, and you maybe heard, right? It's like that you're, you're a version of your five closest friends or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's some truth to what that looks like and who we choose to spend our time with um, in a way that can equip us, build us up, be in the right, they encourage us in our walk. But then also, yeah, we, we can be missional. We can do that kind of stuff too. But there's something about keeping a pulse on, on what your friends are doing, who your kids' friends are, things like that. That's so good. those are two big things I, I would really keep a pulse on as a parent in a Christian school context. And then getting that piece of don't take for granted, like, is it their own? Is their faith their own? And and not miss the opportunities to dive into those questions and work on that hard stuff, right? They're wrestling through some challenging things. Yeah. And so to be engaged and involved in that way. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about money a little bit. Yeah. I think, you know, probably the biggest uh, concern, the biggest reason why yeah. many parents aren't sending their kids to Christian school is money. Um what, uh, if you don't mind sharing, what's the annual tuition right now for uh, a kid at King's? Yeah, so there's going to be a range between, you know, kind of kindergarten to younger. It kind of picks up where it goes to high school. So if you're talking about like the middle of the row, like you bring it all to the middle by 18000 a year. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, man, there's got to be so many families here in that number going like, <clears throat> I, I don't even know why I listen to this podcast because that's just out of reach. I yeah. could never pay, you know, 18000 yeah. a kid to send yeah. my kids at King's. This feels mm -hmm. like maybe just a conversation of luxury for the ultra rich to think about what they want to do. Yeah. Is that true? Or or what would you say to somebody who has that opinion? Yeah, it's a totally valid, valid uh, concern. Like, how do we do this? Um, so I'd say a couple of things. Like, 
one of the things I would always encourage families to do, which we always encourage, we, we do offer, there's financial aid in that process. So there's people that are really passionate about giving towards other people access in Christian education. Mm-hmm. And then of course, on the school front, we're trying everything we can to reduce that cost. So last year at Kings, we gave, I think it's $1.7 million in financial aid. Wow. 25% of our families actually on financial aid wow. and support. And so we're really trying to make it as accessible as possible. Although like that price, it, 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 we live in this really challenging area and region where it's the cost of living is high, compensation for teaching, all this mm-hmm. stuff, right? So if you if you take some time and, and go check on like, let's say OSPI website, like that's what it costs to educate a public school, public school student, yeah. right? So we're all paying that in taxes. Yep. Wouldn't it be great, right? If the government said, hey, you can actually take your tax dollars and give that to your local private school, right? So, so some states have gone that direction. That'd be a game changer. Yeah. If our state was ever to do that, yeah. provide that access. Because my guess is if, let's just assume um, private Christian school was free, right? Like, like I would guess the doors would be, Absolutely. people would bang down the doors just for the culture, yeah. the environment, the values, all the stuff that's going on um, right now. And again, the heart for anybody I know working in Christian education is like, we want this successful to anybody and everybody. Unfortunately, there's some constraints to that in building and run our operations. So that is a challenge, you know? And so what I would encourage families to do, right, is think through the options, right? What that looks like for financial aid, all the stuff, right? It's, it really is like, what are we, how do we do this? Like, what are we yeah. willing to sacrifice in this? Um, and so again, that's every family's a unique situation of like what you're gonna put your dollars towards, how are you gonna steward the money you have? Like, and for me, I've just kind of processed it like, like God, everything's God's, right? Like yep. we're just stewards of that. And when I think about the big picture, like what would I want, what would I want my kids to experience in that? In when I'm on my deathbed, you know, some of the material things maybe that I could give up. What would I rather have? Would I rather have my students the opportunity, my kids the opportunity, more than anything? You, you can't do this, right? You can't pay for them to know and love Jesus or yeah. anything like that. But if, if there was anything I could hope for uh, above anything else, is that my kids know and love Jesus? Yeah, right. And then you get a great education along <clears> with it build a community and friendships that go way beyond actually the 12 years that they spend at the school, right? The friendships, the business partnerships, the relationships, the marriages, all the stuff that comes from that Christian community, similar to a church in a lot of ways too, is invaluable. <laughs> and so trying to wrestle through what that looks like. I know a lots of different stories of how people have gone about trying to make this work, right? Whether it's elicit the grandparents, right? Yeah. Like we're about to hit that season of like the largest <laughs> transfer in wealth between generations. And it's like, there are more and more grandparents saying, hey, we actually care about this right now, right here. Yeah. Like this is, uh, when I die and you get an inheritance, like oh, let's just do it now. Yeah. Let's get your kids in Christian education. My parents are faithful listeners of the podcast, so keep going. <laughs> all right, yeah. all right, well, <laughs> tell me their phone, I will, yeah. I will personally call them, no. Um, but it is, so that's what I would really sit down and wrestle with with your spouse or, or the situation you're in is like, where are we at in this? And, and explore all those different options. Um, Cause at the end of the day, nothing is more important um, then I think the responsibility we have as parents to do the best we can um, to raise our kids up, to know and love Jesus um, and pursue righteousness. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I wonder if we just think through a different angle a little bit about the money. You know, one of the, the realities of the fact that, you know, it does cost however many thousands of dollars a year to send your kids is that uh, obviously that means that your community at a Christian public school is going to be wealthier than the average community mm-hmm. around it. And uh, that was my experience at King's. You know, yeah. I, um, I looking back, it was really bizarre. You know, my perception of my family's wealth status when I was at King's because from by any objective metric, yeah. I grew up very well off. You know, uh, yeah. upper middle class family. Grew up in a house that had a view of the yeah. water. Uh, went on international vacations every once in a while. And yet, because I was at King's, I had this very bizarre self-perception that I wasn't well off. Like, <laughs> I, like, that I was somehow yeah. like, you know, we were doing, I knew we were doing fine, but like we weren't rich. And I was, I was surrounded by all this money at King's and, you know, people living these lifestyles that I just, it was foreign to me. And, um, and, and I wonder like how you think about what that does for the culture at King's and, you know, how you maybe combat a little bit of the, um, the way that money yeah. can kind of shift your perception of what reality is. And, you know, um, yeah, I, maybe that's not a very yeah. clear question, but I, have you thought through that at all? Yeah, I know you all come from different experiences, you know, like part of my child, early childhood, we lived in a trailer. Like we lived on yeah. a little island in the middle of nowhere with no running water. And like, that's my experience growing up. And and then, okay, then around different environments or, you know, whatever it is. And then obviously being around Kings and what that looks like. Um, yeah, that's a real kind of like, okay, how do we navigate this? You know, and some of the teachers that, that work at Kings, you might find yourself in that same context of like, 
hey, we've got our kids here. Like, how do we do? But one of the things I would encourage people is like, like I told you, we have 25% of our families um, that are using financial aid, utilizing that measure. What we see from the outside isn't always what's true, yeah. right? Like it's kind of the perception of, yeah. of private school um, and what that means. Um, so that's one thing I'd first encourage people is like explore what that actually looks like, right? In in of course, like that is one thing that we just want to be cognizant of. Like mm -hmm. I think it is like you can get a distorted perception of like, yeah, you might end up going to someone's house. And you're like, wow, this is an incredible house. I can't believe you live here, right? Like, or one of the things I've come across though, and maybe you see it at the church too. It's like the incredible generosity from the people that have worked incredibly hard to yeah. get what God has given them, yeah, and they steward it really well, yeah, you know. And so I have come across that way more than I have come across situations where I'm like. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're trying to swing that money around with, yeah, uh, yeah. with a little bit of uh, a different approach to this. Like, <laughs> no, like I've come across incredible people with incredibly generous hearts yeah. that are pouring into other families in the community yeah. and what they're doing and stewarding really well the opportunities that God has given them. And so, so that's kind of what I would encourage people to, again, it's hard to know as yeah. a kid kind of sifting through what that looks like. Um, based on lots of things. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if that's a great answer I, to the no, question. I, I think it a, is. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. I think, you know, just my own story, I, I left Kings, uh, had a lot of really wealthy friends, not all, yeah. like many friends that were not. And uh, But for me, like my eyes were drawn to the wealthy. Yeah. You know, I, that, there was something about that really that was alluring to yeah. me. And that was just my own journey of discipleship and sanctification of, you know, su submitting to God and not chasing the idol of money. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that was really f formational for me was uh, getting out of the King's context and, and being exposed to some of the reality of the world, going to, uh, you know, mission trips in yeah. poorer countries and, you know, getting to know families that are mm -hmm. living outside of a dump in Managua, Nicaragua, and yeah. you know, th things like that. I spent 12 weeks in Guatemala and, you know, lived with a family there who was probably making $10 a day. And, yeah. uh, and you know, so, you know, that would be one of my encouragements to parents in, yeah. in the private Christian experience is, you know, make sure that there's there's a broader exposure to the world yeah. than just the one place that you have your your kids. Yeah. And that's true, by the way. I mean, you homeschool your kids, your kids are in public school. We just live in a very wealthy area, yeah. uh, even just comparatively you know, to the world. You know, yeah. so yeah. I, I think that's a huge thing as well. Yeah, we have we have a group of kids that it, it, we love when we each kids get that exposure to that. We have, we have mission trips every spring. I'm not sure if you went on one in your time at Kings, but I think this year we got in Nicaragua, I mean, we got some others, um, and one in Africa where they get a chance to really see the world the different challenges and different contexts. And so it's it's amazing. Yeah, you come to do mission work and serve and learn, but yeah, you often come back, right, with this different picture um, and, and really fire. You see a lot of these kids come back with a fire mm -hmm. of how gospel, uh, how the Lord's working through, um, how the gospel works in their hearts and, and around the world and how they can make that impact even locally. Um, so really cool opportunities when you think about how to expose kids to what else is going on in this world. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, man, this has been helpful for me. I got a lot of thinking to do. Uh, you might be hearing from me sooner yeah. than later, so we'll see. Um, yeah, any last word for, for parents out there thinking through this decision? Yeah, it's. I, I would just reiterate what you're saying about like, it's hard. Like, there's no easy answer. Like, the first place I'd go is is honestly to start asking questions. Like, I'm available to anybody. Like, if anybody stopped me at church or called me or reached out, like, I would sit down with anybody and talk through these things, you know, with obviously a bent towards what we're doing mm -hmm. and, and love what we're doing at Kings. And there's other great Christian schools around here too. Um, but that's the first place is to understand what is going on. What is the value in Christian education? Why are we doing this? And I would say more now than ever, um, the what's happening in the public sector, uh, honestly, should, should theoretically get you to start thinking and ask the questions. And not to say that's not your context you might want to put your kids in, but at least think through it. Um, I believe there's some real value and be intentional about it. If you float along too long and you kind of might look back and you're like, what did we do? Let's at least talk through it, ask the questions, find out what's best for our family and our kids. Um, and every kid's different, every family's different, every situation is different. Um, so that's my encouragement. I would just, yeah, yeah again, I, I'm passionate about, uh, again, what I feel like God put on my heart a while back is to build resilient yourself with the Christ. And the best way to do that, I feel like it's Christian education, is yeah. these 13 plus thousand hours that they're spending and who do you want to be influencing them? Um, and I would, I would recommend and advocate to put them in a Christian school context. Yeah, I, I think that's value. And of course, the church 
in the home, like that is a three strand cord, not easily broken. Yeah. Um, so that is, I would hands down always um, communicate that, that the parent is the primary and that we're a partnership in that. And so we don't ever want to get those mixed up. Yeah. Well, that's a good word, um, Jordan. Thank yeah. you. Really appreciate the conversation today. You bet. Anytime. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah. Man, I love that conversation. I hope you did too. And stay tuned as we release the next couple episodes as we'll keep going and talk about public school and homeschool as well. In the meantime, if you found this interesting, do us a favor and share it with a friend. Text it to somebody. Uh, that's the best way for people to find out about Native Exiles. And we will look forward to being in your feed again soon. Until then, we'll see you later.